declaring another wind that is coming over the earth. The wind, not of adversity and change alone, but the wind of Christ. The dimensions of the Spirit, the dimensions of the Word is coming forth in the power like we have never seen before. Father, we thank you right now. Guys, we thank you right now for what is about to happen. Yes. The nations of the earth will change. Yes. They will stand in the fear of God because you are going to manifest yourself. Yes. Not just your word will be spoken, not just your people will arise. Yes. But the nations of the earth will begin to see the hand of God moving sovereignly. They know only God can do it. Yes. They are going to turn to you because they have been out of, des out of their destiny. And missing their destination. Father, we thank you one more time. Yes. We ask one more time. Yes. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Yes. Not just the Jewish nation. Yes. In the book of Acts. Yes. Not just those who are connected in Jerusalem, Samaria. Yes. But now from the uttermost parts of the earth. Yes. Lord, we pray the Holy Spirit will fall upon all flesh. Yes. Fall upon every race. Yes. Fall upon every nation, every tribe, yes. every kindred. Because this is the year of your scepter. Yes. We thank you that 2016 is the year of your scepter. Yes. Increase your government. Yes. Impact the nations with your peace and presence. Yes. Let there be an incredible manifestation of the King. Yes. And the inspiration of his zeal. Yes. And let your zeal arise greatly and strongly. Yes. That the nations of the earth will know your kingdom is coming. Yes. We live our hearts and our hands and we say, yes. Let thy kingdom come yes. on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. We thank you, Father, that patterns of heaven are falling through. Yes. Patterns of heaven are coming down. Yes. And we thank you that you're going to give to us an understanding of what you're going to do this year. Yes. The power of the Spirit will give us revelation yes. and wisdom. And we, we vow that this is going to be our life. Yes. We take a solemn oath and choose to follow you yes. without fear or favor. Yes. Because we are part of your plan. In fact, we are your plan. Yes. We thank you that this moment that you will anoint your people, yes. anoint their eyes, anoint their ears, yes. open up their spirit, yes. increase the capacity. Yes. Let all that you desire to do this year be the beginning of a great future. Yes. We thank you, Lord. We welcome the Holy Spirit this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. You can see Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 14 Return O faithless sons declares the Lord I am for I am a master to you for I'll take one from the city two from the family and bring them to Zion for I sense in the spirit that God is going to move people from out different places and begin to move them into his will Stay connected, please. Yes. It's important to know yes. that God is the sovereign one who is going to move one from the city, yes. one from the family, yes. one from the north, one from the south, one from Singapore, one from Philippines, yes. and he is going to gather his select arrows. Yes. This year, 28, 2016, is an important year for us yes. because his scepter will be stretched forth from Zion. Yes. Zion is ready. I said Zion is ready. Yes. That the sound of God's voice is going to break forth. Yes. That's why 2016 is going to be an important year because it's going to be the year of the select arrow. Yes. Shout out to me. 2016, 2016. His scepter will go forth from Zion. Will from Zion. He will rule from Zion. Rule from Zion. And he will determine the movements of people the across the earth. One he will take from the north. One he will take from the south. One he will take from the east. And he will take from the west. And different ones will be gathered in the place called Zion. Because he has chosen the right ones. He has taken them by his own choice. And he will gather them. Like he gathered the tribe of Judah. And when they come together, things will begin to manifest. The supernatural grace of God will be upon them. 
they will be ready to hit the assignment. Because they are not only select arrows, they are polished arrows. They are ready. Behold, sons and daughters, look at the horizon, for they will emerge from the nations of the world. You will not know them until they rise. You, won't un you will never be able to find them because he has hidden them in his quiver. It's good for you to say also because it's, it's important for you to capture the spirit of prophecy in your life. Are you listening? Sometimes I, when I lift my hand like this, don't say. When I say let come in, you come in because sometimes you don't know whether to do what is what you did the first time. Are you listening? Yes. Just follow as the Holy Spirit will go. Yes. When I'm in prophecy, just receive it. Yes. Because I sense that God is going to show us yes. them rising in the horizon. Yes. And because they're handpicked, they have competence. Yes. Because He has chosen them. He knows the right one and He has eliminated the wrong one. Yes. They are rising. I can feel it in my spirit. Yes. They may not have any titles now, but God is going to put them stature. Yes. They may not have status. It does not matter if you have status. It doesn't matter if you have resources or not. But God will equip them and give them everything that is needed. Yes. Because even the son prayed in John 17. He said that men and women you gave me. Yes. God has to give us men to finish the assignment. Yes. But Zion must be ready for the assignment. Yes. The assignment is to rule and reign. Yes. I said the assignment is to rule and reign. Yes. So that we inspire a new generation. Yes. Inspire a new generation. Yes. In influence every domain. Yes. And impact every nation. Yes. And that's going to be in our lifetime. Yes. You believe that? Yes. I can see that God is going to move people even from good churches. When people leave and it's the Holy Ghost. Let, let them have a pass. Because God is going to show them. God's going to show us that He is organizing and assembling His bride everywhere. And this bride is a warring bride. Are you listening? There's a scripture in the book of Psalms. I think, I think it's 102. Talking about it, when these people gather together, a generation yet to be created. Psalms 102, that's right. And verse 22, when the people are gathered together, the kingdoms of the earth will serve the Lord. When these people are gathered together, the Bible says this will be written for the generation to come. That the people yet to be created may praise the Lord. For he looked down from his holy height, from heaven, the Lord gazed upon the earth to hear the groaning of prisoners, to set free those who are doomed to die, that men may tell in, in the, the name of the Lord in, in Zion, his praise in Jerusalem. When these people gather together, say, when these people gather together, the nations of the earth, the kingdoms of this world, they will serve the Lord. You know, people are going to bow. I said nations are going to bow yes. to acknowledge the coming king. Yes. His, his arrival is in eminent. Yes. His arrival is soon. Yes. There's no doubt about what's going to happen because he will arrive. Yes. His kingdom is coming. Yes. When the king comes, the kingdom will follow. Yes. Jesus said, if I, by the spirit of God, cast out demons from among you, then the kingdom is in the midst of you. So there's an important time to respond to the Holy Spirit yes. and allow all that God wants to do be done in our life. Yes. Rather than resist it, yield. Yes. Like in the day of His power, make sure that things that God has designed yes. can be carried out because you choose to allow Him. Yes. You choose to allow Him, choose to bend, choose to follow the instruction of the Holy Ghost. So let me prophesy to you that in 2016, yes. 2016 is a special year of God moving men and women into their strategic places, yes. their high places and low places and vulnerable places, but that's the way, that's how God is going to bring in the placement. Yes. Are you listening?
Let me put you in the place, but it's a place of victory for you. Yes. God is saying to you, there's a place by me yes. that I can hide you so that you can see the glory. There's a place by me that you can hide and stay, yes. that you will never be vulnerable. No terror will touch you. Yes. Thousands may fall at your right, thousands may fall at your left, yes. but they cannot touch you yes. because you've been selected by Him. Yes. I said you've been selected by Him. Yes. By staying in, in the pathway that God has chosen, you will not be vulnerable. Yes. Nothing can touch you. Yes. Even if you're led into the wilderness, it's the Holy Spirit that's going to take you. Yes. Even if you have been tempted by the devil, it's the Holy Spirit that allowed you to go in the terrain. Yes. But the Holy Spirit is there. Yes. I said the Holy Spirit is there. Yes. When Jesus said, it is written, it's not only written, it's confirmed by the Holy Ghost. Yes. The one who wrote that was the Holy Ghost. Yes. So the Holy Spirit's dimension and Jesus' dimension will be there. So you must not be afraid because when God takes you in, something supernatural will happen. You will be overshadowed. You will be overshadowed by Him. You will be hidden in Him. You will be kept in the presence of Christ. And all the devil will see is not you but the one who is greater in you. The one who surrounds you is the one who will communicate. That's why this year is going to be an important year. You must open up your heart, you yield your spirit, and give him the highest and the best. Yes. Because it is he who is selecting. Yes. Sometimes God will cause you to cross nations. Yes. Sometimes cross to new towns, into yes. new cities. But he will take you there and establish you. Yes. Every brick is going to be assembled by the builder. Yes. He is the master builder. Yes. Jesus said, I'll build my church. Yes. And the gates of hell will not overpower it. Yes. And so that's what he's doing. He's, he's taking the brick from here and brick from there, putting them all together to become part of one house. Maybe the tiles came from China. Maybe the wires came from India. Come, all the different dimensions of the earth is going to be in Zion. That's why the Zion church will be different. Because they will have all nations. They'll have different nations in them. They can show how the diversity is there. Yet they are united, yet they are strong. Yes. Nations will learn that racialism and re false religion and extremism should not exist because the church exists to bring peace. Yes. We have so many different kinds and yet we have the power yes. to labor and work together. Yes. We don't have a policy but we have, we have all the dimensions of the spirit. Yes. We may not be politicians but we are prophets. Yes. We have the inspiration of the Holy Ghost that is, going to, that is bringing people together. Yes different color, different tribes, different race, different nations, different status, yet we can come together for a common cause. Nations will learn because God is raising a new nation. Sons and daughters that are birthed in Zion, they are not against coming together. And when these people gather together, the kingdoms of this world, they will serve the Lord. 2016 is the year of his scepter. And that scepter is going to come from Zion in a way that you have never seen before. Because everything that's going to happen in Zion is selected by His hand. Yes. This is a stone that was rejected by the builders. Yes. But that stone had value, that stone had, had purpose. Yes. But they discarded it, became the choice stone for God. Yes. And I'm telling you, like living stones, God's going to take you. Yes. From the place where you are to the next place. Yes. Sometimes even within the church, you'll move you in different dimensions of the spirit. Yes. Because the hand of God's going to come mighty. Yes. You believe that? Yes. Say with me, 2016, 2016 is a year of the select arrow. Of the select arrow. God, is God is about to take my life and make it useful again. For this I was born. For this reason I came. That I might rule and reign with him. I have no place, but I stand in his place. I have no name. I stand to honor his name. I have no life. He is my life. I have no hope. But he is my hope. I have no words. But he, have, he is the word. I don't have the dimensions needed. But he is all that I need. This is a special year. Count me in, Lord. I'll give my life. For the course ahead. ahead. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Give him praise and thank you.
2016 will be very important because that's what's going to happen. Yes. If God put his hand upon your life and he wants this and he makes some demands, say yes. Yes, yes in this place alone is not enough, but in the privacy of your own heart, you have to be all yielded. No pulling back. The second thing that's going to happen in, in 2016 is this. God will redesign, reinvent, reshape the ministry gifts in the house. God is going to redesign, reinvent, reshape, mold, make. The ministry gives in the house, especially the pastor. So if you're pastors, this is your slot. I said, this is your slot. In Jeremiah chapter 3, he said, Then I'll give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you on knowledge, will feed you with understanding. There's a, there's a dimension of the Holy Spirit that's going to come upon leaders in the, in the house, Amen. both pastors and pastoral staff. Yes. God is going to give you a special understanding of His heart, compassion like never before, Amen. and strength in the Spirit. Amen. Because you just cannot love people without power. Amen. Because you can love them and still see them die. Amen. But it's power that heals them, Amen. power that sets them free. Amen. You can love them with all you want, but you can see them dying before your eyes. See them being harassed by the enemy. But God will give the shepherds a new heart. And they will be after the, after the heart of God. Pastor Stan, just do that quickly. I, wa I want you to know that God is going to redesign your life. Stop acting like the old. Stop becoming recycled leaders. Time to let these things go. A new dimension is about to break forth. I said a new dimension is about to break forth. Your life will never be the same again. Because there's an encounter that is coming for your life. There's a special encounter coming for, this, for your life. To touch you, to, to heal you, to deliver you, to set you, set you on a new level of the spirit. So that you can do, do what he wants done. Because God is need, need to remake you, reshape you. That's why He said it starts with the heart first. He has to start with the heart first. He has to deal with our hearts on every issue of life. Because we now we're going to represent His heart. Our self agenda, our ambition has to come to an end. You can become displaced. But I sense in the spirit that a new work is going to begin. Yes. A new dimension of the spirit is going to come. Yes. And I feel very strongly, very, very strongly that this year, you will have an encounter with God. Yes. So powerfully that your life will never change, never turn around. Your life will be so completely turned around. It will be unbelievable that you, that you have touched his heart to such an extent. Because your heart is being shaped after his own heart, yes. you suddenly will know him like you have never known him before. Yes. Because now you're operating from his heart. Yes. You can understand his thoughts. Yes. You can understand his words. Yes. You can understand how he, he feels. Yes. Because your heart is been changing yes. to become more and more like his heart. Yes. For that reason, you begin to suddenly know, know and understand God like you have never had before. Yes. This is the year to this is the year for that heart transplant. I said this is the year for that heart transplant. When you touch his heart and feel his heart and know his heart, you're going to know the person. I say you're going to know the person. Some of the things that reminds me is that somebody had a heart transplant. And the person reacted and acted the same way as the donor. Have you heard those stories before? How the they had a heart transplant, they felt the same way. You receive a criminal heart, all the, you become professional in criminology. Are you listening? The heart is the matter. I said the heart is the matter. So stretch your hands, let me pray for you this morning. This is your, this is your year. Pastors, this is your year. 
If you wallow in your herd, you will not rise. If you, if you become limited by your frustrations and fear, nothing is going to happen. But God is going to give them that He raised shepherds. He didn't raise you to look after sheep. Are you listening? But He raised the sheep to look for you. That's why the kind of growth you're going to have is going to be different. Because these are the people sent by God. Yes. They're not just making demand on you, you are yes. making demand on yourself so that you can supply. Yes. Can you say amen to that? Yes. I know without a shadow of doubt the heart transplant is coming for you this year. Yes. I want you in this congress to let, your, let, let all the frustrations go. Yes. If people have hurt you, it does not matter. Yes. Are you listening? When people hurt you, it does not matter. What, what comes against your life does not matter because He is the healer, He is the provider, He is the resource, He is, he is the balm of Gilead. He is the answer for every cry that comes from within your heart. Are you ready to have a new heart? Are you ready to feel what He feels? If you don't have, God is going to come into a place of encounter, an encounter that is going to transform our life. That's why you watch the scene. Many, many of your pastor friends will suddenly begin to disappear from ministry because God is going to just disapprove them because they refuse to come into this place where their hearts can be changed. It's the wounded heart that they have, not the heart of God. It's a heart of guilt sometimes, heart of fear. But God wants you to let that go. What men meant for evil, God will turn it for good. In fact, I'm telling you that you'll go higher because of what they did. Yes. If Joseph was not sold, you'll never be a prince. Yes. Do you know this anger and hatred against Joseph was in the hearts of the brothers? They may have started evil, the devil may have started early, but what happened was all that they designed, the devil and the brothers, are you listening? Yes. Was meant for good. Yes. That's what's going to happen. Yes. But don't become embarrassed by your own stupidity. It's not these people. Nobody could have touched you. I said nobody could touch you. Yes. Because you're God's own property. Yes. But to think that there's so much power to create misery in your life will cause a wrong reaction in your spirit. So there's a new generation that's going to rise yes. with a new heart, with, yes. with, with a new mind. Yes. And God's going to give them the power to feed. Yes. God will show you how to feed. He'll yes. show you, how, he'll show you how, how many ounces of milk and how, how many ounces of water. He's going to show you how to feed, how, why this one needs more feed, why that one needs another feed. God's going to give you this, the word dimension in such a powerful way that when you start to speak, you start to feed. When you start to speak, things are just going to happen. Yes. It's really going to go in. Yes. No longer will you say in your own heart, I'm saying so many things they don't understand. That's, yes. not, that's going to change. Yes. Because God raised them and sent them out and took yes. them one by one and bring them to you. So when you open your mouth and begin to speak, you'll be feeding. Yes. Every time you open your mouth and begin to preach and talk and, and begin to prophesy and, and begin to let the word of God go out in inspiration and prophecy, you're going to feed them. You're going to change them. And God is going to give you the dimension of the Spirit. He's going to give you knowledge. He's going to give you understanding. He's going to give you insight. He's going to give you such an ability to think through things that your mind will be able to see and understand what He has. No longer the struggle will be upon your heart. The Word of God will come through your life by revelation. The revelation knowledge will be part of your ministry in life yes. because your heart has been changed. Yes. The words will come forth from the heart that is changed. Yes. And the flow of knowledge and understanding yes. inside yes. and all the dimensions of the spirit yes. will become clearer and clearer yes. because it's going to flow through your life. Yes. I sense in the spirit a new type of pastors and ministries are going to run. Yes. It will even happen with your cell group leaders. Their heart will change. Yes. They won't feel like as though they are they're just doing a professional work. But the Spirit of God 
It's going to give them a new dimension. Yes. Just like it does in your heart. Yes. So it's going to give you shepherds. Yes. After his own heart. Yes. Who will feed people. Yes. With knowledge and understanding. Yes. And I believe that this is going to be a new dimension. You're going to go back to your, you're going to go back to your church with a new sense of passion. Yes. You're going to go back to your church with a, a real understanding that, that you are assigned by God. Yes. You are assigned by God. Yes. All, all the limitations I see this morning upon your life that is holding you back is going to come to an end. Yes. The, the Egyptian you see today yes. will not see it again. Some of you are physically unwell, but that's not because of the ministry. You're physically unwell because you're physically unwell. Ministry is not the cause, the people are not the cause. But sometimes God measures our obedience. How far we want to go, how far we will go. But God is good to you. Brought you here so that you may have a clear understanding that this is our chance to make it real again. You will be healed. You will be delivered. Yes. You will be set free. Yes. Every limitation that is limiting you. Every thought pattern that is holding you back. Everything that is causing your mind to be confused. God is breaking that right now. Because you are the new shepherd. This is the year of the new shepherd. Shepherd that has the heart of God. Shepherd that know how to feed. Shepherd that understands that God has selected these people. And all the people sent to you are going to be selling arrows. Yes. Get them ready. Yes. Give them knowledge. Yes. Give them understanding. Yes. So I pray right now for you that a new dimension of, of apostolic grace will be upon you as, yes. as pastors and leaders. Yes. That you stay strong, yes. stay complete, stay wholesome. Yes. Because when you do that, new things are going to take place. Yes. For the first time in your life, after, after this session, for the first time in your life, you can breathe the breath of fresh air. Yes. Feel all the congestions are gone. Yes. This is your portion. Yes. I said this is your portion. Yes. It's going to get easier and easier, better and better, faster and faster, because God is quickening His grace upon your life. You can look back and see how it's like a starting block for you to run fast. God has set those things up so that you can run fast. And all that you lost in the past, your dignity, your health, your strength, God's going to return it a hundredfold. Full measure. Hear, hear the word of the Lord that the days of reproach is over. The days of being looked down at will be over. Because God is going to measure you in a different way and make you distinctive. Make, make you a distinguished pastor yes. after, after the very heart of God yes. because from Zion they will come yes. they'll come and you'll feed them yes. and you'll increase them yes. that's why this year you must break every limitation yes. within and without yes. inside your spirit, in your mind yes. in your heart, in your pocket in your finances, yes. in your walk in every aspect of life yes. because God is looking for shepherds after they after his own heart. You can read the book of Ezekiel, I think 36 or 33 talks about shepherds. Go through that because God is doing a new, new way. There's no rules this coming year for pastoring. Do you understand English? There's going to be no rules for pastoring. I say it again because some of you don't understand. Because you think I don't understand what I just said. In every in everything that we do there are laws of engagement. But God is saying I'm going to give you a free hand. You can build you can build with him. I say you can build with him. Yes. In every aspect, there are laws of engagement, there are proper, pro proper protocols and procedures and SOP, standard of operation. Are you listening? Yes. But what, what I mean is the Holy Spirit is going to give you a free hand. Yes. Meaning he's going to, as far as you want to go. Yes. How much, would, how far would
want to go. That's how far you give. As far as your eyes can see. As far as you want to do. As much as you want to push. As strongly as you want to passionately push. It will happen. Amen. That's why I mentioned to you last night that when David began to pastor over the nation, he was not only a shepherd over Israel, but also a prince over Israel. This is what pastoring need to do. Pastoring is not just about anything more than establishing government of God on people's lives. You don't control them, you don't rule them, but you establish God's government. Because you train the child in the way the child should go. And your church members will go well. But they distract you with their needs. I say they distract your actual work with their needs. So you attend to the needs and fail the actual work. But now you're going to turn around. I say now you're going to turn around. Your life will be different. I say you'll be breathing breath of fresh air. Because you're going to sense in your heart that you're now more competent, more capable because the Holy Ghost has anointed you. People are not going to fall, fall through the cracks. Because God's raising a new company of shepherds. Not just the year of the select arrow, but the year of true shepherds. This is going to be your year. Pastors, you're going to rejoice. You're going to thank God that you have come into this year. I want you to look at me clearly. God trusts these shepherds to such an extent that He's prepared to take them from anywhere, everywhere and give them to you. He trusts you. Don't fail this trust. He's giving you His choice. He's giving you His best. And bring them to true shepherds. And you must finish your assignment. Make sure that they are strong. David knew that God had established him as king and established his kingdom for the sake of his people, Israel. All the things that he established in, you, in your life, in my life, is for others. When you carry the grace to others, God will give you more grace. You'll work a lot more inside. The more you give, the more it flows. The more you release, the more it forms within your own heart and spirit. Can you say amen to that? May God give you a supernatural grace right now. That your heart will become pliable in the hands of God. Your heart will be reshaped, redesigned in the name of Jesus right now. Let the Spirit of God fall afresh and make a redesign a new leader, a global leader, a global leader, a strong shepherd that will guard the sheep. Just like you did as you laid your life down for your sheep. And the shepherds are going to rise. I thank you for the shepherding anointing and with the, with the prince, princely anointing upon the shepherds. That this year will be a special year in their ministry. This will be the, like the climax year, like the climax of, of their own life, the achievement, the blessing, the strength. That this year, the pastors here right now, in Jesus' name, will enter into a new day of great rejoicing that they are able to teach and feed and begin to bless the people in a profound way with the heart of God, with the feel of God in their hearts, with the frequency of the Spirit from their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2016 is a very powerful year. The year of the select arrow that's found in verse 14. The year of true shepherds performing beyond our measure. This year your performance will be at a good measure. I said your performance as pastors is going to be at the best, best of your, going to be a peak of your life. Can you believe God for that? And those of your leaders, that will also be the same because God's looking for shepherds and prince. And that's also your portion. It shall be in those days, in verse 16, when you are multiplied and increase in the land, declares the Lord, they will no longer say the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And it will not come to mind, nor will they remember it, nor will they miss it, nor will they make it again. 
Are you ready? The ark was what Moses built under God's instruction. It was a requirement. It needed to be there so that everything around about it works. The way the people were assembled, just try to follow me. Good morning. I said, try to follow me. Don't try to run in a rabbit trail in your head. Can you do that? Yes. I don't want you suddenly to look for notes and, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Just quickly jot it down. Don't worry about that. We have a new thing called technology. What you cannot write fast enough is already recorded. So just pay the money. Because some of you get distracted to write down. You know, sometimes you tell your friend, See, see, I was talking to you at breakfast. See, Papa is saying the same thing. Don't uh, exclaim yourself as a prophet now. Just because you ate some good breakfast. Are you listening? Yes. So stay with me. Yes. Because I, one of the things I cannot handle well is people who despise when God is speaking. I've changed though. You have never met a prophet who is angry. Pray you never will. Especially Old Testament prophets. That's why I said I said I change. I found out that I was in the New Testament. So I could not do what I, the Old Testament prophets did. Some sort of disappointment came upon me. So you are spared. The ark was the reason for everything. Why there were three tribes in the north, three tribes in the south, three in the east, and three in the west. How they were designed, the re the, all the rituals, all the, all the shedding of blood, all the sacrifices, everything was surrounded around the ark. You take the ark away, everything is gone. Everything is meaningless. Are you hearing? Yes. And yet the Bible says that the ark is no longer going to be relevant as it was before because I have found something else. Are you ready? 2017, to, sorry, 2016 is the year where you will carry His peace and His presence. You carry the resources of God in your life. You carry His strength. Carry revelation in your heart. God said you're going to increase and multiply to such an extent that you'll be able to carry what the ark represents. Yes. Government. Yes. Repent, represents its presence, represents protection. Yes. They took the ark to battle yes. and the enemies were defeated. Yes. And God said, I'm going to use my people in such a, such a powerful manner so that everything that needs to be placed in will be placed in. We talk about becoming carriers of the revival grace, carriers of reformation, carriers of the dimension the Holy Spirit is about to release. You'll not, you'll not be empty, you'll not be contaminated, but you'll, you'll contain what God is placing inside your heart. That's why He brought you here so that you can increase your capacity so that you may have all that is needed for the future. Because the future is not an ark, it's you. While you spread across the land, while you begin to multiply, in, in a series of time that God's going to increase your capacity cause you to multiply so that you fill the whole land so they don't need the ark anymore because they are carriers of God's presence they don't need the rituals the whole, the whole style of priesthood is going to change I said the priesthood in our house is going to change how you worship how you pray, how you interact how you transact with God because you're not looking for the ark the ark is in you I'm not looking for some externalism. Are you listening? I see the Spirit of God showing me that, that the way we worship is going to change. The way we do things in worship is going to change. The way we pray, the way we respond. Because something is going to happen. God is going to show you the significance of all the old. They are type and shadow of what you have become. That's why the Bible says that Jesus came to the world not to 
not to violate the law and the prophets, but to fulfill it. So we are going to fulfill that dimension to all that the ark represented is what you're going to be. Are you listening? We don't have to carry the ark on our shoulder because that day and that type of priesthood is over. But now you're carrying him. Carry the one who will rule in the ark. And that dimension of God is going to come. There will be a measure of God's presence upon your life to such an extent that people will see Christians and non-Christians will identify yes. and say the Lord is truly with him. Yes. And we see plainly that the Lord is with you. Yes. And that's going to be the reason why there so many people being healed, delivered and set free. Yes. Because this is the year where God is going to replace ritual with reality. Yes. He's going to replace the natural with the supernatural. Yes. He's going to substitute, remove the substitute and reveal to us the original. Yes. Do you believe that? There was a reason for the ark. There was a reason for blood sacrifice. All that reason is now completed. Yeah. Because God has found you. Yeah. You are the tent of meeting. Yeah. I said you are the tent of meeting. Yeah. You are the one God's been looking for. Yeah. You are the sign and wonder. Yeah. You are the one who carry the presence of God. Yeah. You are the one who will allow increase to take place. Yeah. All his plan and his hope is in and through you. Yeah. Do you believe that? God is going to show you the old and uh, explain to you the Old Testament in such a simple way that everything that was designed was type and shadow. And God wants to raise up the real substance. Not just type and shadow, but He wants to raise you up. How many of you are ready? Because it's going to be some period of time before this thing happens. But when you're multiplied and increased in the land, you're spreading everywhere. And what does God want us to spread everywhere? People like this. He picks you up and brings you to Zion and in Zion he changes you, transforms you and then he sends you out all across the land. That's why something supernatural is about to take place. Because God is going to put deposit in your life. If you, if you carry the ark, there are certain conditions. If you carry the dimensions of God in your life, there are certain conditions. You, not everyone can carry. That's why it's, it will be a matter of time. It shall be in those days when you are multiplied, when you are increased in the land. A, the time will come when you must be ready to carry all that God wants you to carry. Sometimes you carry a word to, to kings and presidents and princes. And sometimes you carry a word to a pauper. Sometimes you carry a word to the youth to the children, but you're going to become a carrier, yeah. not carrier of things that are contagious, but a carrier of things that are divine. Yes. God is looking for those people, yes. going to carry wisdom to nations, yes. going to carry all the dimensions of wisdom that God gives to you to the marketing table, yes. into the boardrooms, into the corporation headquarters. Yes. God is going to give you this kind of stuff because you're going to be a carrier. Yes. Are you ready to carry? Yes. Not just carry the message, but carry the grace, yes. carry the strength, carry the word of encouragement. Yes. God's not using you for nothing. He's using you so that you can become a carrier of what He wants you to carry. Carry that thing, carry that dimension, carry that life. Yes. Father, I pray for increased capacity in everyone that is here. Yes. We're not just hearers of the word. Yes. We are carriers of the message. Yes. We are the model of the message. We thank you that you're going to create life within us yes. so that we can carry all that is needed. Yes. We can carry the life of God, the water, yes. the word, yes. and carry the grace, yes. carry all that's needed for our nation. Yes. We come here to refuel yes. so that we can carry, the, carry all out the mission. Yes. Father, I thank you right now that in this year 2016 will be a special year yes. because you're going to make us carriers, yes. not just hearers not just people who can see yes. that others have been blessed, but we ourselves are going to carry your grace, yes. carry your healing power yes. to the nations of the world, yes. carry the prophetic hope of a new nation yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. I thank you for supernatural grace yes. that is enlarging our capacity right now. Yes. We've been afraid to carry certain things because certain things means certain kind of persecution. But God wants you to rise up Fill, fill your horn with oil. Yes. 
Rise up and allow God to fill you to full capacity. Lift your hands for one, one more time. Lift your hands. I, I can see so many limitations that he said. But these are limitations you set on yourself. These are limitations that people set on you. God said it's time to break the limitations and increase your cap capacity. And multiply so that you can carry it to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. Carry everywhere that you need to carry it. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for trusting us. They will not become leaking vessels. No more leaking vessels. No more contaminated carriers. No more contagious, carrying contagious things. Hallelujah. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2. Are you hearing? Yes. Is God speaking to you this morning? Yes. For in verse 13, for my people have committed two evil. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, to hew for themselves cisterns, but broken cisterns, they cannot hold water. One, we don't want to come to the primary place to draw living water. The other, those who take the living water, don't keep it in. These are two evils. One, you don't want the fountain of living water. The other is that even if you do carry, you're so careless. Are you following? Yes. So God don't want leaking vessels, neither contaminated vessels. You must go find a capacity in your life. Shut off all the negative things so that what you carry will not be lost. Are you listening? Yes. What you carry will not be lost. So that the supply that God gives to you is not lost. Because all the things that God is giving to you is not just for you. It's to shape you, form you, model you, raise you up so that you can give away what God placed in your spirit. That's why nations will change. I said that's why nations will change. So many people are going to be blessed this year. So many people are going to be blessed everywhere. Left, right, center, north, east, west. Everywhere because God's going to make you containers. Carriers of His grace. Amen. Amen. Carry for the sake of others. I thank God that we're, we're not building another ark, building another temple. The whole essence of the ark, or the ark being there, was the reason why the tent have to be there, the sacrifices have to be there, the interactions have to be there. People have to stop, people have to move, because the ark move, you've got to move. So everything about the whole nation of Israel was centered around the ark. And God is going to make you an important, significant, strategic epicenter. So that from Zion, things will go out. Can you believe that? Yes. Nothing will happen apart from you. Because if God chooses you this way, then ark is like this. Are you listening? Then nobody will want to make the ark because the very purpose of the ark has already been established. There's no need to have a replica. You are that person. You are that that person of of divine activity. Maybe I maybe I can give you a scripture in. Let me see if I can find it. God said, you are the man of my purpose. I think it's in, it's in Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46. And verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times, things which have not been done, saying, my purpose will be established. And I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man of my purpose for, from a far country. Today I have spoken, truly it will, I'll bring it to pass. I have planned it, surely I will do it. I, I, I like God, he puts the emphasis where, where, where it's needed. He will say, I will do it. We're not talking about Nike, we're talking about higher than that. 
my salvation in verse 13 will not delay. So no more delays. No more compromise. Do you believe that? Yes. Say the man of my purpose. So basically what happens is that you take over the actual activity of the hour. God dwells with you. God dwells in you. He manifests through your life. He, he would curse you will be cursed. You will be that place. Remember that there are they are those of them who touched the ark when the ark was tilted. They died. Are you listening? Yes. They died. Are you ready for this? Yes. Do you know when, when John the Baptist spoke the message, those who received his message found Jesus? Behold the Lamb of God. He identified the future. Those who rejected Him, His message, never crossed over to the other side. That's why I fear to come to you. Because if you reject what God is giving to you so that you can cross over, you'll be shut in. That's why it's dangerous to be in this place. Because those who reject what you are giving to them can find themselves being cut off. You don't understand, they don't understand. But when they reject the message, they can bring them forward. How are they going to cross? Even Jesus needed a boat, they will take him to the other side. Sometimes the message is like a vehicle. Are you listening? Sometimes the message is like a vehicle. A vessel that allows us to cross to the other side. But you violate that message. You're not going anywhere. To stand in that kind of place, the Bible talks about you're here for, for the living and for the dead. How, how does that scripture go? It, 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 it talks to us that John the Baptist was for the rising of many. That's, that's, that's how he said. It's for the rising and the falling of many. Those who believe what he gave saw Jesus. But those who did not were cut off. Are you listening? That's why sometimes we stand in that kind of role. It's a very frightening role. Our response, responsibility is high because the casualties can be many. And those who rejected Jesus didn't see the kingdom even though God promised them but he had to defer the promise and take it to the next next vessel that he chose are you listening he gave the kingdom to a nation another nation that will bear the fruits and the kingdom was deferred but the king came to them revealed himself but they killed him they destroyed him they did not follow. So God didn't reject them. They rejected God. That is dangerous. That's why I'm trying to be very careful as I get older. When you're young, you, you preach the message. Jesus said, I came for dividing. I didn't come for peace. But when you get older, you have to pray for the peace. Because you know what kind of casualties they can be left behind. So I, I'm not as strong as I used to be. Black is black, white is white. Because I saw the amount of casualties that we can create. Because in as raising up the standard, we expose that which is not there. Are you listening? So I've mellowed down a little bit, not on the compromise on the principles and the the truth of what God is saying, but in the approach. Because some, some of us are given a last chance. Some people came to the School of Prophets and took our conferences, selling everything. They said, if you don't speak to us here, we had, we had literally had pastors who, who said this, that if God doesn't speak to us in this conference, we are going to kill ourselves. 
I had one who wanted to commit suicide. That message must carry people across. You must use everything that God gives to put it inside because you don't know what will work, what will work when. Are you listening? So become a carrier. Say, I'll be a carrier. I'll carry life. I'll carry the fruit of the Spirit. I'll carry all that is needed. Not just for my journey, but for those who are journeying with me. I'll carry the provision. I'll carry all that's needed to keep people alive and to keep people maturing so that there will be no loss. Twenty twenty sixteen is that year where you'll carry the things that really matter. Don't carry a burden that does not matter. Carry what matters. Don't carry everything. Let me give you number four. Twenty sixteen. Is it number four? Twenty sixteen is a year of establishing the throne and the kingdom governance. Are you ready for this? Yes. At that time they will call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord and all nations will be gathered to it, to Jerusalem for the name of the Lord. Nor will they walk any more after the stubbornness of the evil heart. Are you following? Yes. That's why last year, 20, 2015, is a year of thy kingdom come on earth, thy will be done as it is in heaven. It's the coming in of the kingdom. Are you listening? Yes. Kingdom means king's domain. The domain in which, or the sphere in which he lives and rules and reigns. 2016 is going to be a very powerful year. Because we're going to see the government of God in, inside the church. Are you ready for this? Yes. The things that will happen in the church is going to so attract nations. Six people who are excited. Did you have breakfast? Yes. Slept okay? Ate well. Yes. You slept well, ate well, then you should be responding well. Yes. You should bear the fruits of good food. Yes. It, it's important for you to realize this. When the throne of God was established in Jerusalem, all nations were attracted to it. Yes. Your church will become so relevant in the days ahead. Yes. People in the society say, This is the kind of sons I want, this is the kind of daughters I want, this is the kind of order I want, this kind of children I want, this kind of marriage I want, this is the kind of confidence I want. They're going to come, come in and look and see the throne of God established, they're going to be attracted to it. The people from the outside are going to look in. They've been hearing a lot of things but now they will see. Not just the hearing of their ear but the seeing of their eye. They say all nations will gather. Nations have seen light. Kings have seen light, but the light that's coming upon you is going to be different. Yes. Arise, shine, for your light has come, yes. and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Yes. What does that mean? He is come home. Yes. I say, what does it mean? He is coming home. Yes. That's why 26, 2016 is the king is coming to establish his domain. Yes. I said, the king is coming. Yes. He's going to come into your business, he's going to come into your life. Yes. It's going to come into your, your marriage. It's going to come into every, every aspect of your life in such a powerful way that the people will be attracted to it. They said, how come you can do this? Why, why can you do it? Because they're going to look into you and see this thing. Amen. Arise, shine. Look at Isaiah 60. Let me quote it right. Not just... God is coming, glory is coming. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The old darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. The Lord will rise upon you, and His glory will, will appear upon you.
nations will come to your light and kings to your rising brightness. Lift up your eyes round about and see, they all gather together to come to you. Your sons will come from afar, your daughters will come. Be carried in the arms. Then you will see and be radiant. Your heart will be thrilled and rejoice because the abundance of the sea will be turned to you. The wealth of nations will come to you. When the light begins to come, people who dwell in darkness will come. I was, I was in Bangalore preaching and then I said something about the powers of darkness will be completely destroyed or something like that. The whole city went black out. <laughs> and I stood there again, where's, where's Wesley's, were you there? Okay, so there's that one came from Bangalore to testify. <laughs> and I said, let there be light, the light came back. We saw so many people being healed, delivered. It's just like demons began to manifest immediately. The day of unleashing God's power on the gates of hell is coming soon. Yes. Coming soon from this GLS to the next GLS, so the devil have about 12 months notice. That's a long time being gracious to him. Something is about to happen. When the light begins to come, those who live in darkness will come. Is that right? Nations will come. Kings will come. Your sons and daughters will come. The abundance of the sea will come. The wealth of nations will come. Even a multitude of camels will come. That's in chapter, chapter six, 60, 60, verse 6. The young camels of Midian, Epha, and those from Shiva will come. They will bring gold and frankincense, will bear good news to, of the praise of God. And of all the flocks of Kedar will be gathered together to come. The rams of Nabayoth, all these things will begin to come. When God sets up the government and establishes it well, nations will come. Hey, nations are just not looking for religion. They're not looking for change of name. They're not looking for position. Because the kings have seen lying. Nations have seen all kinds of stuff. Our musicians, I tell them again and again, there are so many people better than you, but you are sitting here. Because God's way of choosing is different. Even the simple can arrive in the, the kingdom of God. Even the weak can rise. But in the world, they have to fight for position. That's why when they come and see us, freely loving God, you cannot understand. How would God come to you? How just lay hands and people get healed? Just speak a word and lives of people are changed. They cannot understand. They're going to be attracted to what is going to take place. Are you listening? We have to be clear, and clear in our minds that what God asks us to do is to establish His throne. The year came and the year is almost finishing. But God is saying that the year 2016 is where the righteous scepter is going to spread forth from Zion. God is going to rule. His government is, government is going to be seen more and more in the house. 
There will be more and more discipline in the house, more and more maturity in the house, more and more thoughts to conserve, not to become lavish and careless. Are you listening? The people in the house are going to become the attraction point of others. Non-Christians are going to look at our sons and our daughters and say, we want our sons to be like that. We want our children to be like that. They look at our, our marriage and they're going to say, we want our marriage to be like that. They look at the way we run things. They say, we want to be like that. Are you listening? Yes. There's going to be an open cry in the nations to help them live what we are believing. The schools are going to come ask us for help. I had a funny dream. I haven't told my, my wife or my daughter, so I'm going to tell all of them together. I had a dream. We had established our international school and Scores and scores of other teachers and headmasters were leaving our school entrance, happy and excited, because the word they said was, we showed them the way. Amen. Sometimes when you start, you don't know what you're doing, your left hand and right hand. You just trust that he's moving according to what God is saying. But the day is coming that we're going to set an order so that the world will begin to come in. They're going to see how we raise our children, our, our school, our worship, our, how we spend our money. That's why when they see the way you do things, they must be attracted by the one behind it. Are you listening? That's why 2016 is an important year. Can you say amen? Where God will establish His government in such a way that nations of the earth will be attracted to what we are doing. So that whatever you're doing, you begin to lead the next generation. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Are you excited about the year? Yes. Write down number five. In those days, the house of Judah will walk with the house of Israel. They will come together from the land of the north and the land that I gave to your fathers for an inheritance. Are you following? Yes. In those days, the house of Judah will walk with the house of Israel. They will come together from the land of the north to the land that I gave to your fathers as an inheritance. This is number five. Are you ready? Yes. God is going to bring about a synergy in God's people that explains what it means to be united in diversity. Twenty sixteen is a very powerful year. That God will begin to show them how we can live in harmony though we are, we live in diversity. Diverse cultures, colours, race, religion. Yet we can become one. This is going to be one of the most difficult things that the world is going to face. Bringing people groups together. And all this migration of refugees and so on is creating total confusion of what we should do, what we should not do. They are now opening up the gates without discernment. It's going to create social, economic problems everywhere around the earth. So that those who are, don't have are now entitled to take, even though they're not qualified. They're not part of it, but they want a share. And this disaster of opening our gates to everywhere and anywhere, I know for humanitarian reasons, there's a way to do it. But this is giving a license for people movements to take place. No boundary, no law, free for all kind of stuff. So now I arrive in your nation, I'm entitled for this. Nations are already having difficulty governing themselves. Let alone bringing in others they cannot understand. They cannot even understand their own people, they're taking other people now. 
there's going to be the chaos, there's going to create social economic problems in many, many parts of the world. But God's going to show that the only way is the kingdom way. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. And this is going to be our contribution in 2016 to show the world how we can live in harmony though diverse. Yes. Diverse, diversity is not going to be a challenge. Yes. It's going to be the ingredient yes. to make cultures stronger, people stronger. Yes. Are you listening? Without fear in their hearts. Yes. Something special is about to happen. Yes. So, one of the, one of the uh, fathers of our church member said to me, how can all these people come together? I said, it's called the God Factor. Yeah. He spoke to them, he spoke to them, he spoke to them. All of them are coming because God is the one arranging. Yeah. If I had arranged just that your transportation, there will be disaster. But God Factor, when the throne, be throne becomes established, you're going to find people groups are going to become stronger. Yeah. That's why we hope that all our churches in, the, in Europe, in America, in different parts of the world, which have different cultures, can integrate together so that we can, we can use our harmony, use the diversity, use the different aspects of life, the competencies that you have and the competencies that we have in our nation. Combining it together, we can arrest and help any nation in, in disaster. We can arrive on, within 24 hours to help them. Are you listening? That's why 2016 is going to be a year that the world is going to see how diverse we are and yet we are united. Yes. Because we believe in one God, yes. because we believe as one family, yes. the synergy that is going to come out of these people movements is going to be phenomenal. Yes. That's why I get your church to live in harmony. Yes. Don't let, let there be quarrels, let us be united. Yes. Can, can two walk together unless they agree? There must be proper rules of engagement so that we can engage each other, integrate each other into one another. But all that you do not have, which is in the hands of others, will come to you in proper procedure. Don't make demands. When people go in, they make demands, even though they are not supposed to. Are you listening? And this kind of disorder will begin to take place everywhere. Are you listening? Yes. Many, many times if you, you look in the, on television and you hear these things that the Muslim countries don't want to accept their own Muslim people because they know what will happen because that's what they do when, when they begin to rise. In the same way the church is going to rise to show an example of how we handle people movements that there's no prejudice between black, white, yellow, purple, gray. Our churches are not black churches. Our churches are not white churches. Our churches are not Indian churches. It's a flavor for all. It's a room for all, a hope for all, a haven for all. And this is part of the dream that we have in the rebuilding of the nation. Are you listening? So that there's harmony. The house of Judah will walk with the house of Israel. They'll walk together, not just sit down for conference, but the two will walk together. Yes. Yes. What is going to happen? Because in verse 19, then I said, how I would set you among my sons and give you the pleasant land, the most beautiful inheritance of the nations. And I said, you shall call me my, call me my father and turn away, but you turn away from following me. This is what God is looking for. Number six, this is what God is looking for. So that he will be the father of many sons begotten in the nations of the world. And this is what's going to happen. The manifestation of the sons of God in a very powerful way in the nations of the world. The manifestation of sons of God in the nations of the world. You're going, to be, you're going to see the tip of the iceberg in this 2016. You're going to see sons of God rising from everywhere and find Christians having prominent roles in many, many parts of the world. Not just in football, not just in athletic, political arena, 
economic arena, all everywhere, you're going to see the sons of God manifesting in a powerful way, rising up in their own nations, becoming light. So what a year it's going to be. I say what a year it's going to be. When we synergize together and show what God is doing in the midst of us, you're going to find that there are people from everywhere that God has placed will suddenly begin to break out. The man that is hidden behind the education system will suddenly manifest. Political arena, they'll manifest. In school, they'll manifest. It's going to be a great manifestation of the king and his kingdom through his sons. Say after me, 2016, 2016. your righteous scepter will move forth from Zion. Increase of his government. Impact of his peace and presence. Incredible manifestation of the king. Inspiration of his zeal. Will establish his coming kingdom. 2016 is my year. Of being the select arrow. It's my year. Of being the true shepherd. 2016 is a special year where God will increase capacity, enlarge my capacity, so that I'll be God's carrier and carry what He wants me and deliver what He gives me. 2016 is a year where the throne of God is established in such a way. That nations in the world, in the world are, going are going to be interested, attracted, attracted by what God is doing God and what He is saying. God 2016, 2016 is a year to walk, year to, walk to synergize, to synergize and become part of one another's life and show the world, show the world there, can there can be harmony in the midst of diversity. Each child that God gives to us is a gift of God with gifts from Him so that they can be a gift to society. This will be true in our 2016. God gives us different times, different competencies, different grades, but we are part of the same winning team. 2016, we'll see the scattering of those who do not want to live in harmony. God will move them out so that those who cannot walk, they will not be around. We'll walk with those who are connected. There will be peace in the house. There will be no cross currents. Because God's government will be there. And a people movement will take place. 2016 is the beginning of the year of the manifestation of the sons of God. You will see the tip of the iceberg of a people movement that will begin to create momentum. The momentum of revival. The days ahead, the movements that God is creating will get the momentum. It will touch the masses. In the midst of all of that, there will be a cry on the earth saying one more time, pour out your spirit one more time. And this will be the beginning of the full manifestation sons of God. I'm getting my life ready. I'm getting my family ready. I'm getting my mind determined so that I'll take full stock of what God is saying. I will not quit. I will not abort. I'm ready for the challenge. Count me in because I'm yours. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
stretch forth your scepter and rule from Zion. Set the kings, destroy strongholds, send forth your spirit one more time. Lift your hands and say, Come, Holy Spirit. We are ready to cross over with you. Be our leader. Be our guide. Be our counselor. Be our governor. And help us to cross over to the other side. We thank you. You've gone ahead. And you're going to take us through. We cannot fail because you will not fail. We believe what you're saying. 2016, the scepter will go forth from Zion. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.